Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss this Geeks for Geeks problem today and today's problem is k sum paths and it is a medium level problem. So the problem is like fairly straightforward. It says that we have been given a binary tree and an integer k and we have to find the number of paths in the tree which have their sum equals to k, right? So they have also specified what is a path. A path is, can start from any node and end at any node in the downward direction. And uh, we have to compute the answer modulo in the power 9 plus 7. So what do we mean by this particular statement downward direction? So I spent some time in this statement only because sometimes it is very unclear what you have to do. So uh, what do you mean by downward direction is that for example if I start with this particular node, I can only end at either this node or this node or this node. So all the nodes that are in the subtree of this particular node and also the node itself. So all for, for all these nodes I will be able to form my answer right now uh, how do I actually solve this problem uh, this problem might seem very difficult but uh, it essentially becomes very easy once you understand the core idea behind such problems so this is not a new problem we have encountered similar problems many times so the problem is like this this is a very general problem normally the problem is we have been given an array and there are some array, array elements Right. Now, in this particular array, we have to find the number of subarrays, number of number of subarrays whose sum is zero. Subarrays with sum zero. Right. So this is a very general problem. And we have seen the solution to this problem many times. So how do we actually solve this base problem first? Let us discuss that. We have a map. So it can be a map, normal map, or an unordered map. It's up to you. So it will store the prefix sums of the map itself. Now, what advantage do we have in storing the prefix sum? We'll look in a while. Let's say the map is initialized. Map of zero. Frequency of zero is initialized to one because if I don't take any elements, that means the prefix sum will be equal to zero. At this particular point, when I have not taken any elements, the prefix sum is obviously zero. Now I take the first element, so the prefix sum is a. So map of a plus plus, right? Now if I take the second element, then I'll do map of a plus b plus plus, right? Now let's say the current sum is x, right? The current sum or the current prefix sum is x, and my map of x is greater than zero. What does this signify? We need to understand this part very carefully. I am telling you this part again. Let me just draw an array. So my current prefix sum till uh, this particular point is x, right? And my map of x is greater than 0. That means I have also encountered the same prefix sum somewhere backwards, right? So if it is, let's say, let's say map of x is 1. And I have encountered an x here. I have not added it to the map yet, but it is still equals to 1. That means there must have been some other position where this was equals to x as well, right? There must have been some other position where the prefix sum was also x. If the prefix sum is x here, if the prefix sum is x here also, then what does that mean? This means that all the elements in this range, all the elements in this range, the sum of those elements is equal to 0. Right, because the prefix sum was x here, that means the summation of these three elements. Now, all of these elements, after adding it to x, it still becomes x. That means the sum is equal to 0 in this particular range. So, this is how we generally find the number of subarrays that has a sum equal to 0. What we do for each sum, each sum, each prefix sum, we add, let's say this is my answer, answer plus is equals to map of sum. And then I update my map also, map of sum plus plus right so this is how we solve this problem we just traverse through the array we just add the current element into my sum so that this particular sum variable stores the prefix sum now i add a map of sum into my answer and then i update my map so what is happening here i'm calculating the number of sub arrays which has a sum equal to zero now let us modify this particular problem and let us make this equal to k right so now I want to find the number of subarrays whose sum is equals to k. The problem or the solution is also very, very similar. It's just that we just have to change a couple of things. 
सो इफ द सम इज एक्स हियर राइट एंड लेट से द सम इज एक्स माइनस के हियर वॉट डज द सिग्निफाई इफ द सम इज एक्स माइनस के अप टू दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट द प्रीफिक्स सम एंड द प्रीफिक्स सम एट दिस पॉइंट इज इक्वल टू एक्स दैट मीन्स द सम ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर रेंज शुड हैव बीन के ओनली देन एक्स माइनस के प्लस के विल बी इक्वल टू एक्स राइट so this is the only difference now instead of searching for sum i need to search for sum minus k right so this is how you solve this particular problem of finding the number of sub arrays when the sum equals to k now how does this help us help us in our problem current problem so now instead of an array we have a binary tree but you will realize that each path can be considered as a single array so what are we essentially going to do here is let's say this is our tree now we are currently at this node so we can store a simple map then we go to this node and then we go to this node and then we go to this node so you see this is similar to what an array looks like in a straight line right this is an array so we can find the sum or the answer in this particular path now let's say i go back let's say i go back to this particular node and i come to this node so what i'll essentially do is i'll remove all the updates that were made to the map by this particular node while traversing back or backtracking back right and when i go to the new node i update the map accordingly so this is the only difference that you had to do in this particular code so normally in an array we would not worry about multiple paths we would just have a simple map but since here there can be multiple paths this is considered as one path right and now this is going to be considered as another path so while you are going back from this particular node which is not now which is now not included in the correct path then you will have to update your map and you will have to remove the sum added by this particular node right so this is the only thing that you have to do differently while uh, than a normal sum array sum technique right so you see if i show you my submissions so what i have essentially done is i created a map i have set the frequency of 0 equals to 1 because if i do not take any elements the prefix sum is going to be 0 and there is only one way to do that and i have initialized my answer and mod variable now i have uh, called my dfs function and uh, i am passing root and zero so zero is the current prefix sum now if the current node is null pointer i am going to return zero so actually zero is not returning you you could remove this particular zero because this is a void function so there is nothing being written from here you can just also write return now i am updating my sum with sum plus is equals to node data so i am calculating the prefix sum up to this particular node right now if f dot find sum minus k is not equal to f dot n so why am i doing this particular part first i need to check whether this sum minus k is present in my map or not you could also directly just write this particular nine because the default value is zero but the problem is when you introduce too many new variables uh, in the map let's say let's say that the uh, that the value x is not present in my map right it is not present in my map f now if you try to access f of x it is going to give you zero which is the intended behavior but the problem is if you have multiple such x1 x2 x3 x4 for each of them a new key will be added to the map so your map will now contain x1 as well as x2 as well as x3 as well as x4 though they are not required but the map will still contain these elements right and this might lead to memory issues in some of the problems and you might uh, encounter memory overflow right so to reduce or to avoid memory overflow we use this technique where we first check whether the element is present in the map or not and then only we are going to add it to our answer now after that i am just going to update my map right i am going to add this particular prefix sum to my map now i am ca just calling dfs to the left and dfs to the right and then i am removing this particular value from the map again right as i have told you in a normal uh, sub array problem you don't need to do this but if you are doing it in a tree where you have multiple paths you will have to remove this particular part right and now you might also be thinking that we removed it from the map but we did not update the sum variable that is not required because the sum is not passed by value here passed by reference here it is being passed by value so for each state we have a different sum value we did not need to update the sum variable right and also if that f dot sum f sum is equal to 0 the Uh, i am going to erase it from my map it's just that i am just removing the key from the map once its frequency has become zero right so you can do this just to save on memory right and at the end i can just return my answer variable so the overall time complexity would be n log n in this particular case because i am using an ordered map
if you try to use an unordered map so let me uh, do that also let me just quickly do it and submit it this problem let's see what happens i believe the i'm not sure whether the find function will work or not in the unordered map so it does work here let's just try to submit this yep so this also works the thing is uh, unordered map although we say that the uh, average time complexity is o of 1 but in the worst case it is also n square so that is why i, al I always use uh, ordered map but uh, if you try to follow this particular constraint of o of n then you can use an unordered map right so how is it o of n or o of n log n you are just traversing through a tree one simple time right and each time you are trying to access some elements from the map right so traversing the tree is o of n and if you try to access the elements it depends whether you are using an unordered map or an ordered map in an ordered map like i used before it is going to be log n so the overall time complexity will be n log n and in this particular case it is o of n only right so this is how you could solve this problem i hope that you guys were able to understand this particular solution i have tried to relate this problem to some other problem that we generally see in other places right so that was it for this particular video and uh, if you find this video useful then definitely do like this video and drop your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye